Good morning, everyone, and welcome to room number two, session number two. My name is Mark Rincon, and I'll be your moderator for this session. I have the esteemed privilege of welcoming Sarah Jo Hungary. Uh, Sarah is a, just some information about Sarah. She's a passionate educator with over 23 years of experience as a teacher, principal, and a coordinator of professional learning. She currently serves as the Director of Statewide and Strategic Partnerships with Discovery Education. Sarah takes great pride in delivering timely and relevant professional learning, supporting teachers with innovative instructional design and providing educator tools and resources that support students in reaching their academic and personal goals. And with that, I will turn it over to Sarah. Thank you so much and good morning, everyone. It's such an honor and a privilege to be here with all of you. This is Create Engaging Learning Experiences with Discovery Education. And I just wanna just start with saying thank you for being here on a Saturday after a long week of work and for continuing to build your capacity in the work that you do. Um, it's always so inspirational. So thank you for everything that you're doing every each, each and every day. Um, it's, it's very commendable, so thank you. Um, again, I'm Sarah, and I am here to help support you not only today, but every day of the year. <laughs> um, if there is anything that you need going forward, I want you to know that you can always contact me. This is my email. And um, if you ever are having any difficulties with Discovery Education, you have questions, you need support for you, your team, your school site, I'm happy to come in and support in any way that I can. So um, just know that that is available and um, it is on our resource guide. So in the chat, we are going to put a link to a resource guide um, that is gonna have lots of this for this particular session. We actually have lots of really great links to help you get started um, with different subject areas, different topics. Um, so um, lots there to look at and choose from, um, but I wanted to help get you started within the platform. So um, I hope that's a, a helpful tool for you. Um, I just want to open that up really quickly to just show you a few things. So when you go into the resource guide, um, there is um, information on how to log in, which we're going to go over here in a few minutes. Um, we do have a new Canvas course. So if you want to extend your learning after today, it's a three-hour self-guided course, but you can get three hours of professional learning. We have help guides, customer support number, as well as my email. And then as you scroll down, you're going to see by grades, uh, subject area, links to lots of different content. And it's just to get you started. This is just a little tiny sliver of what's in discovery education, but it's sometimes nice to have a place. Like if I'm a 6'8 teacher, ELA, where can I go and look at some some resources. So that was the goal with um, this particular um, resource guide. So I hope it's helpful. Um, all right. So we are going to dive in and we're just going to start with, you can either come off mute or you can type in the chat. What does discovery education mean to you? Like you can, if you're brand new to discovery, you can say that, but if you think of discovery channel or animal plant, all of those things, or you can think of discovery education in general, if you've used the platform. So what does it mean to you? Go ahead and type or come off mute. Great. Thanks, Roxana. So approved, safe resources that you can use in the classroom. Great. Erin's using it to make puzzles and vocabulary. Oh, you used it years ago for that. That's great. Yes. We used to have that really, really great puzzle maker. <laughs> I remember social study videos that kids love. Great. Awesome resources. That's great. So thanks everyone for sharing. So great. Great. Timmy, thank you. So there definitely, you've got videos, songs, interactives, all different types of resources that um, are here in one spot that are safe, vetted, 
and available to all educators and students through, to, in Nevada. This comes through a partnership with the state DOE and Nevada Gold Mines. Um, this partnership is continuing for the next two years. So you definitely will have this um, um, for um, quite a bit of time. And I love it. Dr. Morris has been using it since the United Streaming Days. That's awesome. That's when I was using it in the classroom. <laughs> Um, you know, and we had like 40,000 resources and we were like, whoa, this is amazing. I don't have to go to the library and check out a VHS tape. It was awesome. <laughs> so we started many years ago um, when um, streaming came into play and it is definitely morphed over time. And we are constantly adding, changing teacher and student voice is so important to us. And we listen and we try really hard to bring in content that's relevant, safe, and that's timely for teachers. And so um, I'm excited to share just a little bit about that today, but there's so much here. The one thing I always like to share because we're talking about creating lessons today is that not to be come overwhelmed with the amount of stuff in discovery education. When I first started out, I said, okay, I'm just gonna start using videos in my ELA block for a month and see how that goes. And then I started adding in some quizzes and then I started adding in. And by the end of the year, I had really learned, but I didn't get overwhelmed by it. So I just always like to use that as a preface because there is a lot here and a lot to learn about. But um, taking one step at a time is, you know, just like with any new tool um, is helpful. So during our session, we're going to review how to access discovery education. And I'd love to know in the chat from a one, two, or a three, how familiar you are with the current platform. One being you just logging in today. Two, you've logged in recently and explored a little. Three, you feel really comfortable in discovery yet. Um, so that would be really helpful. Just to know where we're at. Thank you. So lots of two, so logged in, a couple ones, great. That's helpful one, make sure everybody's on the same page. Good, okay, super helpful. Thank you, and thank you for those who are brand new. Super excited you're here and joining us. Um, and so you'll see, um, we're gonna learn how to find and view multimodal resources. We're gonna learn how to assign and share those resources with your students. And then we're gonna to start to learn how to create activities in Studio. Um, Studio is our creation tool. It's very similar to like PowerPoint or Google Slides. It's Discovery Education's version of that. It lives in service. And we have lots, thousands of ready to use lessons that are all also in there. Yeah, we Norma, we definitely do have math um, curriculum. Yeah, that's a great question. And then, uh, or math resources to supplement your math courses, but that's good to know that we have somebody who teaches math, that's great. And then we have new quiz tools and then um, that I'm gonna um, start to dive into and then um, make sure we have some little hands-on time and to answer any questions you have. So let's start out with diving in. So when uh, you log into Discovery Education, uh, for the first time, you're going to go to www.discoveryeducation.com, and we're putting that link into the chat, and then you're going to get this page. It might look a little different, just the, the background moves, um, but you click login in the right-hand corner at the top, and then you're going to get to this page. This is new this year. Um, we're trying to make logging in as easy as simple, both for educators and students. So there's multiple pathways to get in. If you are in a district that uses Clever, we are most likely um, single sign on with you. So you can click sign in with Clever, or if you're with Classlink, same thing. Most teachers are finding most success by just searching for your school. So you can search for your school's name. Um, and then um, that will log you right in. If you're having any trouble with logging in, please just let me know. I will help you. We also have customer service online Monday through Friday, eight to four, but I am also available to help you if you need any support. Now, students can sign in through this avenue too. They just would click over to the student sign in and the same thing now, but if you do have Clever, you can go to your Clever page and you have a discovery education tile there and that will get you and your students in very easily. So um, just know um, that you have that pathway as well for your district if you have those tools. If you have any questions, just let me know throughout today's session about logging in. All right, so let's do some creating and look at how to create and or pull some existing resources that you already have. So the first thing is with Discovery Education, we highly encourage adding fun, simple strategies 
along with any of our content, um, whether it be a video, a song, an interactive, giving ways to for students to be accountable to the content in that whatever you're using is very important, but it also engages them. Because if you think about video and entertainment, right? When we go to watch TV or we go to watch a video, what do we automatically do? We automatically go into relaxation mode, right? We're like, okay, I'm just gonna sit here and passively watch this. Students have, they, they have to learn how to use multimodal resources for educational purposes. And having two college age students myself, I can't believe how much media they use these days. I mean, my daughter barely goes to a live lecture anymore. Like most things are done through video. And so um, giving tools to our students to be able to pull out content is gonna be so important as their, for their future college career, whatever their pathway is. And so we have created something called Spotlight on Strategies. These strategies are not brand new. They've been around for a while. They're all vetted, um, research-based, but submitted by teachers, but they've been approved through McCrell, they've been vetted, and they are easy to use in your classroom. Very simple, little to no prep, which is all music to our ears. So um, you can put these with any video, again, any resource, and, and have your students engage in the content. I've pulled one of my favorites, A-E-I-O-U. It just works with almost anything, any subject area, a lot of grade levels. So basically, A-E-I-O-U is your students get out their notepad or a piece of paper, and they write an A-E-I-O-U on the left-hand side, and they draw out their graphic organizer. You can also print the graphic organizer from Discovery Education. We have it in there. And when they're watching that video, they're going to write down an adjective about or two about what they're learning about, an emotion they're feeling as they're watching the video, what's something interesting, um, some facts, and something maybe surprise them. That's their oh, and their um is a question they have. So what I would love for all of you to do right now is just pick one of these. You have to do all of them. Pick one of the five that you're gonna do. So you're gonna write an adjective, you're gonna write an emotion, something interesting, something surprising, or a question you have as we watch this video together. So this um, particular video is a new video series we just launched um, this spring. We are, you know, publishers can be a little slow sometimes in getting new content out, especially in science. <laughs> and so we have decided to do a whole series on different science topics, and it's called Demystified. You're going to see a big box at the top highlighting this. Um, and this is one of those videos. They're meant to be really short, catchy um, topics either to review a key vocabulary or the topic, to introduce it, um, and to just really engage the kids. So this is one of those videos. Deep in the forest on the island of Borneo, located off the coast of Asia, you'll find a pretty strange looking plant with an even stranger way of finding a meal. They're called pitcher plants because they look like something you might find in your fridge, a pitcher, but its jug-like shape serves a much different purpose than pouring your favorite drink. After a long night of flying around, bats in the forest crawl into the plant, get some sleep, then they're off again, but not before leaving behind something really important. Poop. Pitcher plants rely on this poop as a key part of their diet. Without it, they probably wouldn't get the nutrients they need to survive. These two organisms, the plant and the bat, rely on each other and a lot of other things in their environment for survival, making up something called an ecosystem. Let's demystify ecosystems. Okay. So not all ecosystems are as unusual as the one in Borneo, but all ecosystems have a lot in common. They are all like communities or neighborhoods. Ecosystems are made up of all the living and non-living things in an area that depend on and interact with each other. Nature is full of ecosystems and they're all around us. They can be as small as the space under a rock or as large as a mountain range as tiny as a puddle, or as huge as an entire ocean. There are different types of ecosystems. Two examples are terrestrial, or land ecosystems, and 
aquatic or water ecosystems. The Borneo forest is an example of a terrestrial ecosystem with many kinds of living things, all of which depend on other living things to eat. Sometimes living things can be shelter for other living things, like the bat and the pitcher plant. Living things also depend on non-living things too, including air to breathe, water to drink, rocks and soil for a place to grow. And I'm just gonna pause there for time's sake. So I'm gonna give everybody like 30 seconds to think about either your A, E, I, or U, and then go ahead and put your um, response in the chat. <laughs> I love that, Aaron. <laughs> awesome, Brandy. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> That works, Michael. I love it. So you can see how easy this is. So I'm able to right away, and I could even say, okay, because if I had my students do each one of these, I could say, okay, so who, who had an emotion as they were watching this? What was your emotion? And then they can start, and it gives like a place for your students to start with conversation, to go, and then you can extend that out. Um, you know, what were some interesting facts that you found um, that, you know, so that you're drawing in, bringing in that student voice, but it gives the kids an opportunity to draw that information out from the topic. Again, little to no uh, 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 prep, really easy graphic organizer for kids to take notes um, and simple, and you can use it with almost anything. You can do this even with your written text. So um, really great strategy to use. So thank you for um, your contributions. Yes, that plants need bat poop is such something that we all can walk away and know today. So it's really fun. So um, with any of our videos, you notice that I added this actual video into my PowerPoint. So you can download the majority of our videos, upload them into whatever systems you're using. Um, as long as it's safe, you can't put them on YouTube, like anything like public, but you definitely can pull them into your educator resources and utilize them that way, pair it up with a, a uh, strategy and it's ready to go. Now we build a lot of these as well and ready to use, and I'll show you where those are. And I'm gonna show you where these spotlight on strategies are here in a few minutes, but really <sighs> simple to add them in. Here's, I'm just gonna do one more. This is a fun one. This is a great one for an anticipatory set or for something your kids can do. They can build two one fours as well. And it's a great way um, to get your kids engaged. So can you guess my two one fours? another spotlight on strategy? It's great for hooks, things like that, inferencing predictions. So basically you're gonna give the students two clues, one fact and four pictures. And they're gonna guess what you're gonna be talking about today. And you can put this on a slide. You could just put the pictures on the slide and verbally tell your kids anyway. But a great way to use images, which is a great form of media to get includes in our kids. But again, kids can write these too. So we're gonna practice one together. So there are uh, two clues. This event mobilized 40,000 participants. The event lasted 381 days. Any guesses yet? Need a little more information. People participated in this event could walk up to eight miles a day. So you can start thinking if you think you have, and as soon as I put the images up, it's gonna pop up for you probably. So put some pictures. I've got my four pictures. So go ahead and in the chat, write what your guess, what are we gonna be talking about today? Great. So Brandy's suggesting Montgomery bus boycott. Dr. Morris is saying civil rights. Great. 
So you can see, we can start and I, then I can say, well, what evidence do you have to support that statement? So even before I put up the answer, we might have a lively discussion. It will help me also see what prior knowledge my students might have. So having that discussion piece between popping up the correct answer definitely will help. And yes, we're going to be talking about the Montgomery bus boycott, but also maybe involved. Now your students could create these again after learning about maybe you give them vocabulary words and they you know it's a hidden vocabulary word and they create their own 214 um, that they can share out in groups and um, get the students involved. A great way to show what they know as well and how to pick appropriate media. So um, that can be very helpful as well. And then of course, um, we have ready to use activities that go along with this. So I'm gonna show you just to go into service really quickly um, where you can find um, the strategies and then um, give you just a little bit of information about the actual resources. So when you come into Discovery Education, the first time it's gonna ask you a few questions and then you're gonna see your homepage here. search by these different asset types, videos, activities, interactives, et cetera. So if you're looking for something specific right away, um, we also added a microphone in. Keyword key phrase, or you can do an open search just for today if you want to come in and look at what are the different types of assets that are available. I didn't type anything here in the top, but you'll see that you have all different types of ways to filter down. You can filter down by grade span, you can filter down by subject. You can search um, by different assets here at the top. You can see all the different types of resources that you have. And then over on the, even on the left-hand side, so if you have um, some English learners who need some resources in Spanish, for example, we have resources in other languages, copyright, publisher, reading levels, you can narrow down those results. So using those filters will definitely help you find some things. And for our math teacher in the group, I just wanna show you something really quick because I'm here. If you go to videos, and you come over to uh, topic, no, 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 type, sorry, type here. If you go to math explanation and math overview, you have over 10,000 tutorials um, for mathematics across different topic areas. Of course you can search, I'm, I'm not sure what math you teach. So if you're doing algebraic expressions, you could put that in and just filter by the explanations and overviews, but this is a great math resource. So you could pull one of those videos and then assign one of those spotlight on strategies. So where do you find all of those strategies? If you type in SOS or spotlight on strategies, and it's in your um, keyword, um, your resource guide as well, we have a whole channel on those different act, um, activities that you can put along with any of your videos that you have. And we actually categorize them by different skill set. So if you're working on students on vocabulary development or inferencing, we've categorized them in that way to help narrow down your search. So you can come in. Some of them are repetitive because it just depends how you use it, right? And then one thing we did last year is we created 30 student facing videos to introduce them to the topic. So there's one here on AEIOU. It's a two minute video to show your students what is AIOU and how to use it. And you can play that for them. But you can see there's some fun ones up here like six word story, tweet, tweet um, that are really easy to utilize. So if you go into the activity videos channel, it'll show all the student facing channels there. Um, and you have them here at the bottom. We also have graphic organizers that go along with some of them. So like the AEIOU, there's a graphic organizer if you want to print it for the first few times to get the kids used to the format, you could print this and share it with your students as well. So that way you don't have to necessarily make a slide. They just get out their AEIOU graphic organizer and utilize it with the video that you're utilizing that day. 
So again, that is in spotlight on strategies and you can pair those up with any resource in Discovery Ed. Um, any questions about spotlight on strategies or the resources so far? Let me just pull up chat. Okay, great. Okay. So now I'm going to go to ready to use activities. Um, one thing uh, else that we heard very loud and clear in the last two years is that educators just really want ready to use lessons that they can tweak and edit and, and make them their own, but have a head start on them. So what we started doing this last spring, it's been about a year now, we started creating ready to use and we've added thousands of these to service and we're adding hundreds of them every a quarter semester. So every month there's new ones that are input into discovery education and they're for all grade levels, all grade spans, choice boards, grammar um, lessons, ELA lessons, math lessons, wellness lessons. There's just a ton of different types of ready to use lessons. And these are all built in studio. So I'm gonna just show you a couple examples of these today um, to help you um, see what we have available. So this is an example of fix-its. We have fix-its for K through five. So if you're a K through five teacher, these are excellent. Um, so you just pull up um, the fix-it. I'm gonna pull one up and show you and I'll show you where to find them. So with Earth uh, Day yesterday, I pulled one up that's relative to that. This was one that was released this month in April. And um, basically um, what it is, is a way for students to focus on a topic or area. So they're working on using commas in this one. And it's a choice board. So there's eight different um, lessons here that the teacher can use throughout the month to review comma placement. So using commas in a series or using commas and dates and places. And what's fun about these, when the kids um, go on to any one of these, a student, a lot of teachers across the globe are just projecting these into their room. They're, it's part of a, a part of their day. There's a quick little video that talks about what is recycling here. So it gives a little bit of input on the topic of hand. And then it gives two sentences the students would correct. It has some helpful hints there. But again, the teacher's projecting this. They have their little notebook out for their um, grammar lesson for the day and, or their grammar review. And then they correct it together. Simple as that. So that's what these are. And um, we have, again, for grades K2, the sentence fix it. I'll show you where to find those in just a second. Or we have something called daily fix-its for three, five. And honestly, even if I was an English teacher in uh, junior high, I would use the daily fix-it. So if you come in and type daily fix-it in here, all of them will come up. And here's the April ones. Um, there's one for each day of the month. And what it's different from the K2 version of these is that they actually um, uh, help the students um, with learning, reviewing all different grammar topics in one setting. So they would go on to the day, whatever day it is. So today is the 23rd. So I'm going to go the 23rd. So on this day in 1564, a famous English playwright and poet, William Shakespeare, was born in England when Shakespeare Day this week. So there's a quick video about William Shakespeare here. And then you can see there's two sentences. But here you're going to see capitalization, um, uh, quotation marks, ending punctuation, homophones, all of that in one. And there's an answer key that goes along with these just because there's so much that the students are working on to help the teacher out too. So again, really great to um, utilize very simply in the classroom. So those are fix-its. Now we have tons of ready to use activities that can be used by in different subject areas. So I'm gonna give you a few channels um, that you can go to to find some of these resources. The first one is our instructional activities channel. So if you go into your keyword search at the top and type in instructional strategies, that channel is going to come up. And this is something, uh, um, if you go to channels, let me go to channels there. Wait, did I spell it wrong? Mm -mm -mm. Did they change the name of that one? <laughs> Let me, sorry about that. There's 
not the instructional strategies. They changed the name of one of these for summer and I'm wondering if that is the one that they did. Of course they would right before my session. <laughs> Let me start with summer of learning. So go ahead and type in summer of learning. That's another great one to get started. And even though this is for summer of learning, it's a really, really great channel just for all year round. So if you come into summer of learning, which is gonna be really great to share. Um, there's two different channels here. There's one, and then here it is. Here's your extra, I'm sorry, I wasn't instructional strategies. So it have been instructional activities. I was mistyping, I'm so sorry. So, but you'll come in here and here's three different channels that you can pull from. So um, you have the summer learning activities, instructional activities, and the activity center. So again, this is in your summer of learning channel under educator resources. So if you go into that instructional activities channel, you're going to see instructional activities by grade span here, and we'll have some featured ones. Those are the ones that are the newest, um, that might be our most popular, um, that you'll find here that might be timely, like Earth Day choice boards, etc. Then you'll have some recently added um, resources here, and then you can come down and you'll see them by subject. So by science, social studies, math, health, etc as you come down and you'll have some of these um, resources available to show you what these activities look like. So um, for example, if I come into um, this one, let me go into another grade level because I've done K2. Let me go to 6-8, for example. So if you go to 6-8 and you come down to one of these activities, let me come down to social studies, for example. We haven't done social studies yet. So if this one is a background builder, it's on the preamble. So you'll see it's our background builders are meant to, again, introduce the topic to the students. They're, they are based on standards. So you'll see over here, little teacher notes. It'll give you the standards that it is covering. So you can see here it's grade seven C16, um, what the suggestions for use, what's the learning target. Um, and you'll see this is 14 pages long. So this ready to use activity is ready to go. Always starts out with a way to, for the engage the kids right from the beginning. So what are you observing? What questions do you have? Gives the learning target. And then it's gonna give them um, uh, one of the SOS strategies already built in. So again, pre-built, ready to go. And then they're gonna use the, the, this graphic organizer, the three, two, one pyramid, to select from any of these topics and to learn about them, but then also to apply that learning. So um, forming a more perfect union, for example, they'll watch that video clip, gives them a question, but they can use the three, two, one graphic organizer to write their notes ready to go. So you could do, if you're working on this over a week, this is the subject in your class, you could be using these on multiple days, or you could give students choice and have them do small group work with this. There's so many different ways that you can utilize it to engage your students. Now, one thing about these, there's a couple things. They always um, have an extend your learning at the end, but I wanna show you um, just a couple things here. First of all, if there is any language text here, um, if you're assigning these asynchronously to your students, where is my... Oh, there it is. Okay. So you see right here, you see your little immersive reader on the right hand side. So any of the text on the slide can be pulled out into a reader. So if your students need that accessibility, they just click that little um, gray box. It'll pull out the text. It'll read it to your students. Reflect and show what you know. And so um, they can speed up, slow down um, that voice speed. They can change it from female to male. They're, they can increase or decrease the size of the text. They can change their background colors, et cetera. They can also look at parts of speech or they can use a line um, focus if they need a smaller amount of text. The picture dictionary is here for any of the words um, that we have a picture for. So you can see here pyramid. And then you'll notice here, it also has a translation feature. So if I have a student who needs it in Spanish, Pirami. they can Pirami. read that. Or if they need the whole text in their native language, 
They can put the document into that native language. And if Microsoft has that audio file, it'll read it to Reflexiona you. Y muéstralo. And they can go between Spanish and the original uh, or, or English language and have that one-to-one -one correspondence right here. So um, that's just a nice tool that's built into all of our slideshows so that the students have that available to them. Another thing that's really great about the studio boards is that you can make a copy of them and tweak them. So if you want to change something on here, like you wanted to add another question uh, to this and make it interactive for your kids, you can make a copy of it. Just click copy, copy and continue. And then I'm able to come in and adjust anything in this lesson. So maybe I just want to add another question here. So over here on the left hand side, there's a plus. I can come in, I can add text boxes. I can add um, whatever I need to do. I can come in here and change the language. I can go ahead and add in new content. I can add new slides. So you can see this has 14 slides, but I can add new slides if I want to right from here. Um, there's so many different things that I can do to make this my own. Um, but if, even if I just want to change one word or I want to change the video, I have my own video that I want to add in here. I can upload it from my device. Um, so there's just so many different ways that you can make these your own. Once you've made any adjustments to it, uh, so I'll just say, if, I'm just going to show you how I can quickly do this. What did you observe in this video? I just wanted to add some language. Once I'm ready, I just click share. It's going to give me a copy link right there. And now I can share it with my students. So it's ready to go. I can either assign it to them or I have a share link that I can always use um, and share um, out in a Google classroom or on a Canvas board. I'm able to share anything out. I can also assign things directly to students. Everything in Discovery Education is assignable. So I can click assign. I can give directions. So I can say, please complete this assignment on your own. Uh, be ready to discuss in class tomorrow. And then I can add the date that I want this to go out to the students. I'm gonna do it today, but I could choose in the future. And then I would say, okay, this is due maybe on Monday. I'm going to select the class I want it to go to. If we have single sign-on through your district, most likely your rosters are already uploaded. If not, you can create classes as well. I'm going to go ahead and give it to all my kids, but I can give it just to a few students if I want. I can differentiate as well. I click assign, okay. And now when my students log in to their assignment, they're gonna see their assignment there. So you can see they have that background builder ready to go. It'll give them the directions. They're able to open the assignment and they're now able to take uh, and go through the lesson. So they can go through, um, you know, here. Now this one does not have a lot of places, but here you can see now I can answer the questions as I go through um, and do the lesson. Now this is a choice board, so the slides don't go in order like I'm showing you. Um, but um, so if I go to establishing justice, it'll just have the question there. But if I go to slide 14 or to, uh, sorry, to that question, it will record the answer um, here, this one off the choice board and they can actually upload a picture and submit it to me as well. So um, I'm able to collect that data. And so when I log into Discovery Education, I'm gonna find the answers to any of those underneath my classrooms, any assignments that I have there. You can see it's here. Once a student submits their work, I can also grade it from here. So um, this is available uh, for me to access their information. I know that was a lot in really quick time. We're on short time, but if you want more information about this, how to assign content, how to build a studio or tweak a studio board, you can come into educator supports, which is here at the end. And there is a step-by-step -step guide under getting started. So getting started has how to assign and share with your students and then how to access ready to use lessons right here. It'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to do everything that I just shared with you. 
Um, and for grades K through eight, if you put in activity center, you're gonna find tons of ready to use lessons. Every month we have a new calendar that comes up. So if you are a grades three through five teacher, you can come in here and there's gonna be 30 or how many ever days of that month lessons, a lesson for each day of the month. You're gonna see math, health, science, et cetera, um, virtual field trips. Of course, you don't have to use the one for that day, but they're, they're timely for that month and topics. Um, so you'll have ready to use lessons that you can pull from. It's a great way to get started with some engaging lessons. And then you can tweak them and make them your own if you would like to, or use them as is. Now, but if you just want to project them on the front of the classroom and start with that, that is perfectly okay too. Any questions so far? Chat, come off mute. We're gonna go into hands-on here in just a minute. So that's a great question, Roxana. So she's asking if when you're assigning ready to use lessons, the kids complete asynchronously, does the work get auto-graded? If they're multiple choice and you've enabled that, yes, they do. But if they are like open-ended answers, no. Um, obviously, you would um, go in and, and grade those. So it will auto-grade and you can print a report. Great question. But the one thing I do want to share with you, one thing that is brand new, is that you actually can now add quiz questions as well to, we have a new quiz tool that will auto-grade. So I'm going to go into that section really quickly. Um, and then we're going to get some hands on time. So under at the top, you have the new quiz um, tab. And under there, there is three different types of quizzes that you can create to engage your students in learning. So the first type we have are video quizzes. So you can add questions to any of our videos in Discovery Education now. This launched last fall. So any video, you can add quizzes, assign it asynchronously, and they are poll questions, uh, multiple choice, or short answer. So again, the multiple choice and poll questions can be graded automatically, and you'll be able to come here and print, get your results or your grades from your students that will hold that information. We also have something called standard quizzes. There's all different types of questions that you can answer, and we're going to try one of these here in a minute. But we have kids can answer multiple choice, multiple, multiple choice, right? Multiple answer, multiple choice. Short answer, poll, they can annotate over pictures, draw or record their voice. So um, it's a really great robust tool that you can build standard quizzes just within Discovery Education Assign and it will grade the ones that are appropriately graded. And then you can also launch live quizzes. The first thing I'm gonna say when you go into that quiz tab, if you go to the quiz library, we have examples by grade level of different quizzes that you can definitely look at. What are they? And they'll tell you right here if it's a video quiz, standard quiz, um, um, so that you can see the different varieties that we have. So we're gonna actually do one together today just to give you that experience. So again, I'm going into my quizzes and I actually took this one from the library. It's labeling the parts of a flower, so really simple one question for us today. And so once I have my quiz ready to go, you'll be able to come over here to actions and you're going to be able to launch it now. So I'm going to go ahead and launch it. I'm going to click launch now and launch. I'm allowing guest participants because I'm going to give you a link in the chat. Now for students, you, we have a code. So they can copy the code and when they come into um, their login here at the top, they can join the live activity from here. So they're able to put in the quote code and join. But for us today, I am going to, ah, let me go uh, rejoin live activity. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that link and I'm gonna put it in the chat for you. Yes, Erin, so similar to Edpuzzle. Yeah, the, the video quizzes are very much similar. Great, that's a great point out. So everybody go ahead and click the link in chat. 
And then that's going to allow you to join mine. Just join as a guest. Click join as a guest. And I'll see that you're joining here on the left hand side. And right now I have your student device locked. So it's not showing a question yet, but I'm going to go ahead and unlock it so that you guys can get started. And on this one, it's a labeling the parts of a flower. So this is an annotate where you can draw over a picture. I just wanted to show you one example, but again, you have more traditional types questions as well as annotation, audio recordings, et cetera. So go ahead and label. You have uh, the, the words at the bottom so you can pull from them and just putting the correct uh, vocabulary word in the correct spot. And right now I have your names hidden, but I'm gonna be, get your data in real time. So when you submit, I'm gonna start getting completed answers coming in. I can start showing those answers. You can always go back and edit. And I love that um, this person, they just drew, they didn't write. So different kids are gonna do different things. Some are, dragging and dropping with arrows. Some are typing, some are writing. It gives some choice to how the kids want to show their answers. I love that that's coming through. Some of you found the colors, which is nice. <laughs> so fun to engage the kids. And I can show names if I want to. So I did, so I can even see like Leanne, I love that. I did the same three different colors when I did it the first time. So I can make that connection. But if I want to keep this anonymous, I just hide names. And then for my class, so we can look at answers and see um, what um, others are putting. But I just love to see how different people um, approach the topic, right? And so as I go through, if it's correct, I can say, yes, this is correct. Nope, this isn't correct. Or there's a circle here and I can say, try again. So if I wanna give another chance, I um, can as well. So it's really great, um, but it's great to get that instant feedback. Great way to engage your students. Um, you can do it as an exit ticket or you can give a more comprehensive test through this program. So it's really um, whatever you prefer. And once this is done, um, I can continue it. I can um, uh, give it to, um, uh, ask another question if I want to. I can finish the quiz. If there was more than one uh, qu quiz question, I can have assign it asynchronously to my class and have them continue. There's so many choices here. And one thing that I love on all of these, there's an exit ticket at the end. So right now you should see an exit ticket. And my question might be, um, how do you feel about labeling that plant? Do you feel confident or not? You can choose green, red, or yellow. I used to have cups on my desk <laughs> for this, but now you have a digital way to do this as well. Like I need more practice, it's too difficult. So you can answer that and it's gonna show up for me in real time um, how my class is filling. So I can get a quick pulse as well. So the exit ticket is very valuable as well. So lots of different ways to use these quizzes and engage your students in learning. For video, if you're gonna do video questions, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this one. Um, for video questions, I'm gonna finish this. Um, one of my suggestions, and I um, suggested this is in the other group, is watch your video first, have your quiz questions ready, then build your video. Um, quiz because um, going, it gets a little tricky, pausing, stopping, going back and forth. It makes it a lot easier. And then once you um, give your assessments, you go into that quiz tile, you can report. There's a report view, a question view, a student view, and you're able to pull those reports and pull the grades out. Right now, this doesn't have grade pass back in Canvas, for example, but we're working on that. Um, so that's a big um, ask we're hearing, and hopefully it'll come out in the near future. But at this time, it's still you would manually have to transfer the grades to your gradebook. Okay, but great way to engage your students for sure. Um, and just one other, so if you go into any of our videos and you want to build a video quiz, you come up here, here's the video, go to build an activity video quiz, click next, and you're gonna be able to add your questions right in and save that. So really easy to do.
So from any video, it'll launch right into there just to give you that tip. All right, so we're gonna just take a few minutes. We're getting to the end of their session. There's never enough time for everything, but this is a great way to get started, to start exploring. I'm gonna give everybody two minutes. Dive in, try to log in, do a keyword search, find a ready to use activity, a resource that you wanna pair up with an SOS strategy. And then um, we're going to um, share out and then we're I, uh, gonna do a survey. There's also an attendance tracker that Mark just put into the chat. Make sure you completed um, the uh, attendance tracker. And we will have a survey at the end too. So make sure you do those two things. Right. Any questions about logging in, accessing the content, starting with the ready to use to get you started is a great way place to start or assigning an SOS strategy to a resource you find in discovery education are great ways to engage and create lessons for your students utilizing our resources. But we do have those educator supports and I do wanna let everybody know that we, um, if you wanna go slower and at your own pace, to walk you through and to start building and creating. We just got uh, released at the beginning of April, a new three hour, it's, you will earn three professional learning hours um, through a Canvas course. And it will walk you step-by-step step everything that I shared with you today. You'll learn how to create your own studio boards, create all the three different types of quizzes. Um, all of that is built in. So if you want that support and to earn some more hours, um, that is in Canvas. So please feel free um, to do that. If you have any questions, I'm going to put um, the link to the point of contact for that in the, the chat here in a minute. Um, so uh, the, there is somebody in Nevada who is helping me with that. But if you have any questions about this course, you can um, definitely go there. We also put out a newsletter every month with timely resources. Like right now, it's Financial Literacy Month. So we have some really great resources in there for that K through 12. Um, so on the um, April newsletter, you'll have information, but Earth Day, things like that will be um, included. So definitely check that out. And then don't forget your educator support tabs at the end of um, that navigation row. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here today. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, we just put in the links to the resource guide again, the slides my email, and then uh, please feel free to contact me as well as the survey. Make sure you complete the survey. We have a couple more minutes. And then your, um, your, mod your group that you're gonna be working with will start at 11.35. So thank you again. So, so um, excited to be with all of you. And 